Hello everyone, welcome to Target Focus Life. My name's Steve and today I have one of the most popular pump shotguns ever made and my very first shotgun that I've ever owned. It's a Mossberg 500. So if you're looking for a detailed in-depth review on this pump shotgun, let's go. When it comes to pump shotguns, Mossberg claims that the Mossberg 500 sets the standard. I'm not really sure what that means. Kind of like this is like baseline. It sets the standard. Like if it's not, I don't know what that means exactly, but I got a lot of experience with this shotgun. Like I mentioned in the opening, this was my very first pump shotgun. Not just pump, my very first shotgun ever. When I was in college, I started getting into hunting. I wanted to go out and shoot. I wanted to hunt birds. I wanted to hunt deer. I live in slug zone. So I got this gun primarily for two reasons. It had the bird barrel and a slug barrel, and it was about the cheapest shotgun I could find. That still holds true today. The Mossberg 500 is one of the cheaper pump shotguns out there. Where they really stand out, I think, is they have a nice balance between price and quality. So yes, they are a little bit cheaper, but quality is there. A lot of people own these shotguns, run these shotguns, and there's definitely cheaper shotguns than this. There's definitely more expensive. So we're gonna go all through the Mossberg 500 today, starting with the specs. We're primarily gonna be talking about the all-purpose field model, which is just the wood model with a bird barrel, not the combos. They, they offer several different combos, turkey guns, personal defense guns, a lot of different variety, a lot of different options in the Mossberg 500. I believe I counted 23 different options on Mossberg's website. MSRP of this shotgun is $489. Of course, that's MSRP. Unlike most of my guns, I didn't get this one at Reed's because I bought it like 16 years ago, something like that. This is a 12 gauge model. It's also available in 20 gauge and 410. So you got a few different caliber options to choose from. Three inch chamber on this gun. Obviously it's a pump. The weight of this shotgun is seven pounds, eight ounces. We'll see how that turns out. Uh, there's other pump shotguns that weigh a little bit more. The only reason you'd want a gun that weighs a little bit more is just to help mitigate a little bit of that felt recoil. And pump shotguns generally have quite a bit more felt recoil than a semi-auto. We're gonna put that to the test today. I already have some thoughts and opinions because I've shot this gun quite a bit. First, when I first started trick shooting, this is the gun that I did it on. I used this gun at the very beginning of my exhibition shooting career. So this gun is near and dear to my heart. Now the length of pull of this shotgun is 13 and 7 eighths. That's the distance from the trigger to the butt end. And I'm pretty sure when I bought this shotgun and started shooting, I didn't even know what length of pull was. I had no idea what drop. I, I didn't know really anything about guns when I bought this shotgun. But now I know that 13 and 7 eighths is generally a little bit short for me. If you see, I mount this gun up. I got this long neck, I get into my guns. My nose is basically touching my thumb, which means I probably didn't shoot this shotgun very well, which is probably why the first time I shot clays, I think I shot two out of 25 off a hand thrower. It was bad. I was terrible. The gun didn't fit me. I also didn't know how to shoot shotguns. I didn't have a coach. That's why it's so fun when I actually get out now and I can start coaching people that never shot and I start to see these little things. We just make small corrections and often they can start hitting really quick. And I just sit there and think, I wish I would have had a coach when I was starting. Man, I would be so much better right now. Let's take a look at the trigger pull on this one. First, I like to just pull it up. It actually doesn't feel too bad. There's almost no pre-travel to it which doesn't always mean I shoot them better. But as far as weight, it's under seven pounds for sure. Uh, we're over six, yeah, six pounds, 6.7 ounces. We'll enter that one, give it another pull. Six pounds, 0 0.8 ounces. So we got a little bit lighter on that one. One last one, six pounds, four ounces. So we're at about six pounds, 3.8 ounces or six pounds, four ounces on the average trigger pull weight. It actually felt, Maybe a little bit lighter than that. It's kind of interesting how triggers can feel different than what they pull on the scale. That's a quick look at the specs of this shotgun. Now let's move into ergonomics. Let's take a look at the feel, the function, the controls right away in the hands. This shotgun actually doesn't feel bad at all. What I like about the forearm is it has its contour basically almost all the way through the length of the forearm. So some of these shotguns have contour in the forward half, in the muzzle half, and then as you get closer to the chamber, it flares out. Well, I like to grab a shotgun right here. When you're pumping a shotgun, if your arm's way out there, it's just, it's hard. I don't want my arm fully extended. Maybe I have short arms, I don't know, but I'm about six foot. So I imagine a lot of you like a little shorter grip, 
like right here. So from that standpoint, the texture comes all the way down. I like the forearm a lot. The grip here is a medium grip, kind of meaty, but it feels pretty comfortable. It's got the top tang safety, which I actually really like the top tang safety, right or left-handed. That safety is easy for to get. Of course, if you are left-handed or left eye dominant, you're gonna be pumping shells, they're gonna come across your face. That's a little bit of an annoyance, but a lot of people put up with it. More manufacturers are coming out with left-handed models these days, so that's encouraging. I think they're realizing that there's a lot of the market that's actually left eye dominant. Why would you leave out a large part of your market? right? Give the people products that work well for them. It is drilled and tapped on the top of the receiver. I like that. The rib is a flat rib. It's a vented rib, of course, as most modern shotguns are, but it's flat with the receiver. Doesn't work extremely well for me because I really have to get into guns. I really have a hard time getting my head down. So a stepped up rib is much preferred for me. Two beads, brass mid bead and ivory front bead. This one has ported barrels, which makes it loud for the people you're shooting next to, but should help with a little bit of muzzle jump and felt recoil. We'll put that to the test in just a minute. When it comes to the recoil pad on this gun, I can't even get it to squish at all. I mean, it, it's not a recoil pad, it's, it's a pad without any cushion. If I was gonna shoot this gun a bunch, I'd probably throw in a Falcon Strike. You hear me talk about Falcon Strike in my videos. On my SX4, I put on a Falcon Strike. If we do that here, look at that. Look how much that flexes in. The Falcon Strike is tremendous at helping reduce felt recoil I highly advise them. They're not the cheapest pad on the market, but they're probably the best. Uh, very high tech. Last couple things with ergonomics. The release is on the back side of the trigger. So if you're right handed, you gotta reach around. That's not all that uncommon. The loading port has very sharp edges. I really don't like that. A lot of modern guns now are coming out where they're a little bit beveled there. Now this gun is, like I said, uh, I bought it in 2000, 2008, 2009. So they may have changed some slight things. I'm not 100% sure. Instead of going out and get another Mossberg 500, I thought I'd just use the one that I had. Okay, enough talking about that. Let's get into recoil and reliability. Let's throw some ears in here. Just a quick heads up. The ears, the eyes, almost everything that I use is listed in the description below. So if you're ever interested, a lot of the stuff I have discount codes for. These are the Axel Ghost Strikes, absolutely love them. These are ESS Ballistic Glasses, absolutely love them. Now I'll be honest, ESS necessarily isn't on the cutting edge of style, but all their stuff is mil spec. They're safety glasses, they're ballistic, and really that's why I put glasses on while I'm shooting, to keep my eyes safe. Because really, it'd be hard to be a professional shooter without eyes. I'm just gonna take a few shots here through the 500. Ah! Quite a bit of felt recoil. It's primarily back into my shoulder. I'm not taking a lot to the face. Let's try a few off the machine here. Oh yeah. Oh, now we're hitting. Shoot it pretty well. I would say I've gotten slightly better since my first time shooting. Recoil wise, it's, it's a kind of a hard hitting gun. In fact, a couple years ago, I'd been doing uh, exhibition type shooting, right? I was out for a practice. I was shooting the Winchester. I don't know if it was the SX3 at that time or SX4. And I thought, let me pull out the old Mossberg for good old time's sake. And I just threw up a few clays. Smoked them just like that. And I went, that kind of hurts. I'm gonna put that gun away. And that was the last time I shot it. So it's good to get it back out actually. It doesn't seem like it has a lot of recoil just there. Smoked all three clays, pointed really nice, shot pretty nice, even though it's too short for me. But when you shoot it side by side with a gas gun, you're gonna notice this has tremendously more recoil. As far as reliability, I've shot this a bunch, haven't had any issues. If you're a Mossberg 500 owner, put it down in the comments, share your experience with us. How many rounds do you have through your gun? Have you had any issues with it? Have you had anything break? This gun has been used and abused quite a bit and uh, really no issues with it. So it is kind of a workhorse aluminum receiver versus uh, some of the guns like the Browning BPS would be more of a steel receiver. I honestly gotta admit so far in this review, the gun is better than what I remember. I think I've been a little unfair to Mossberg in prior years, uh, just in my personal opinion. But as I shoot this gun for the money, MSRP of 489, it's a pretty decent gun. But we're not concluding yet. There's more review to go. Uh, we gotta look at quality build. Let's break this gun down really quick. Four end cap, off. Barrel should slide right off. Been a lot of years since I've taken this apart. 
We gotta pop some pins here. Just a one pin design, I like that. Oh, there we go. Slides come out. There we go, just took a little finagling, a little angling. That was actually easier than I made it look. Yeah, the receiver's pretty light. Can definitely tell that's aluminum. Where's all the weight in this gun? A lot in the barrel. Very heavy barrel compared to this. Um, but overall, yeah, pretty standard construction. Not a lot to talk about here. Fairly simple to take apart. Very similar to a lot of other pump shotguns. Let's slap it back together. Slide goes back on. Last time I fully took this gun apart was May 9th of 2010. Why do I remember that date? What stands out about that date? Well, that was actually the day my first child was born and my wife woke me up. She said, uh, I think we're gonna have to go to the hospital today. And I said, well, that sounds good. I'm gonna clean my gun. Let me know when we gotta go. So I proceeded to clean this gun. I did not get through it. And my wife said, okay, we gotta go. So we hopped in the car, traveled to the hospital. It was Mother's Day 2010. And I had my very first child, which was a very special day. So me and this gun, I mean, we go back. The Mossberg 500. Okay guys, it's back together. Let's do some speed shooting. Put this gun to the test on the clock. See what it's really made of. Oh boy. I might have thrown just a little bit early, but that was a 133. A 2.9 to 2.9, not terrible. Let's pick up the pace, go again. Oh, wow. Okay, I think I jumped the gun just a little bit again. Yeah, the 2.7 to 2.8 split, which is pretty good for a pump shotgun. Total score of a 1.24. I cheated though, guys. One last time, let's get it done. Woo, only chipped that one, but that was 100% legit. A 1.34. A 2.8 and a 2.9 split. That seems to be where I'm at with this gun. Took me 0.77 to get on that first clay. A 1.34. I gotta say, Mossberg, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the negative thoughts I've had about your products over the years. I haven't shot them a lot. This is my first experience with the pump shotgun. And since then, I've kind of had a negative view of Mossberg. But now that I've shot, how many reviews have we done over the last year? I mean, 60, 70 guns, whatever it's been in the last year, and actually putting them through a review and not just taking a few shots, but putting th them through the full review. I have a new respect for the Mossberg 500. I shot this better than several other higher dollar pump shotguns. The biggest downside of this shotgun is the recoil. Brutal. I would throw a Falcon Strike on it. Link in the description on that. Otherwise, for the money, pretty solid gun. What's cool about the Mossberg 500 is there's so many different options, accessories. You can swap them out, very modular gun. And if you're looking to get into a pump shotgun that isn't gonna break the bank, this might be an option for you. Hope you enjoyed this review. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, whether you're in the field or in life, you're only gonna hit those shots you're laser focused on. So live target focused. See ya.